The Big Wave by J. Gabriel. Chapter 3 La Palma. Meanwhile, some 4,000 miles east, part of the island of La Palma slipped into the sea. The wave was on its way. The authorities had been notified. In nine hours, waves 130 to 164 feet high would travel five to six miles inland from Florida's Atlantic coasts. At 5 p.m., the emergency alert system sounded. The patrons in the 7-Eleven looked up to the screen. The scrolling banner read, Tsunami Warning. That can't be right, thought Reggie. A hurricane and a tsunami? This must be making history. By 12 o'clock, the big wave will be here. Where was her relief manager? When was she going to get to go home? Not that she had anything or anyone to go home to. Reggie looked away from the screen to see the cannabis woman returning. She was carrying a coffee carafe. I knew she was a nutter, Reggie thought. Everyone in the store began to move a little faster as they headed for their respective homes. The cannabis woman asked if she could fill the carafe with coffee and pay for however many ounces it equaled. It was an odd request, but it was an odd day, Reggie said yes. Some teenagers came in and tried to buy beer for their hurricane party. A couple whose cruise had been canceled stopped for gas. Fill it up on three, please, said the slightly overweight older man. Where are your maps, he asked. Reggie pointed toward the magazine rack. Over there, next to the magazines. Where are you headed, she asked. I think Tampa, somewhere away from the coast, he replied. Probably a good idea, said the cannabis woman as she approached the counter with her carafe. Reggie made the necessary calculations and started to ring it up. The man with the maps had come over and was opening one of the maps when a large piece of paper fell out. Reggie looked at the cannabis woman, who was a little too involved inspecting her cuticles. The man picked up the paper and started reading. The cannabis woman paid for her coffee. Look what I found in this map, said the man. A medical marijuana petition. I wonder how that got in there, apologized Reggie. It's about time we started doing something. Already there are 25 states that, that have it, you know. Really, she responded. The cannabis woman had come back inside and heard part of the conversation. Yes, really, she added. I couldn't help but over here. Yeah, 25 other states. With that, the man left the store and Reggie and Janet were alone. I'm Janet Jones, she introduced herself, medical cannabis advocate, inventor, writer, retired social worker. Well, hello, Janet. As you can see from my name tag, my name is Reggie. Yes, replied Janet. I did see that your name is Reggie. Nice to officially meet you. She reached out her hand and Reggie took it in hers and shook it. Mmm, Janet thought, such nice hands. So, uh, are you and your partner ready for the storm, Janet inquired? What makes you think I have a partner, Reggie parried. Well, the pinky ring, I just assumed. You know what happens when you assume. Yeah, I know, sorry. That's okay, and no, I'm not ready for the storm. I've been here since five o'clock this morning. This was Janet's opportunity. Uh, I live just up the street. You can come over to my house. It's close to work, and I'm stocked up on ice, batteries, and water, she offered. Gee, Reggie started, I don't know. Listen, Janet began, I'm not some serial killer. If anything, the worst thing that will happen is you, you'll end up trying some medical cannabis. I knew it was you, shouted Reggie. It was me what? I told you I was an advocate if you're talking about the petition in the map. It's all right. I think it's great that someone is doing something to educate people. So are you going to come over? She asked again. Reggie needed a smoke. The store was empty, so she walked around the counter and stood by the door. Come on out with me. I'm going to have a cigarette break. Janet followed her outside to the front of the store off to the right of the entryway. 
Reggie began to feel her pockets looking for her lighter. Janet held out a light. I always carry a lighter. You never know when a pretty woman will need a light, she smiled. Thanks, said Reggie. So where do you live, she asked. Here, offered Janet, reaching into her pocket and pulling out a sheaf of papers. This is from a party I had at my house a few weeks ago. It's a map to my house. Reggie took the papers and looked it over. All right, she relented. Great, said Janet. Her words did not express the happiness she felt. You can pull right under the carport. I guess I should get going so I can feed you. We can't just drink coffee. With that, she climbed onto her trike and pedaled out of the parking lot. Reggie watched and wondered what she was getting herself into. She was excited also. Spending a stormy evening with this very nice woman was the best thing to happen all day. To be continued. Thank you.